The, the golden age of detective fiction is uh, inter detective murder mysteries during the interwars. And if you never heard of the golden age of detective fiction, you've heard of the, the one of the most famous um, authors, the Queen of Crime, Agatha Christie. This was a Google, uh, Google Doodle celebrating her 120th birthday four years ago. Um, detective fiction falls under the, con the crime genre. So this is fiction, not true crime. And um, on, the on the right side, you see the kind of more professional ones. Oh, sorry. So this is the very first detective story uh, by um, Edgar Allan Poe. This is, um, if you've never read this story, it's the classic locked room mystery. After that, there was uh, Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone, which also created a lot of the conventions that would kind of epitomize the Golden Age storylines, which also included the inside job, um, the locked room, and the uh, twist at the end. So the thing that really kicked off the detective genre is Sherlock Holmes. This is still not Golden Age, but um, when this came out, the idea of the consulting detective and the bumbling sidekick, uh, Watson, were formed. So this is the tree of where the Golden Age blooms. So you have the three authors at the top that are examples of the Golden Age. Uh, so much so that these writers set up their own club. They called it the Detection Club. Uh, this was one of their dinners in 1932. And they decided to get together to format some rules about what constituted a good detective novel. And basically, you have to have a mystery that's presented to the reader, but they should be able to solve it along with you. So it's, based, it's, it's, a, it's a puzzle wrapped around a story. And they had a lot of rules about what made a really good story. I'm not going to read them all out, but my favorite one is no twins unless you're specified. Uh, no Chinamen, of course. This is the 20s. Um, and uh, various other things. But the main idea they had was the idea of fair play. And that you had to play fair to the reader so that they can solve the crime. Of course, nobody does. So the formula, these are the main formulas for how to write a detective uh, fiction. Um, and again, uh, and, and the setting. So you know about the locked room, the country estate, or the train where there's a limited number of suspects and only so one of you is the killer. Um, and you usually have the amateur professional detective who knows a lot better than real homicide police. Um, large number of false suspects, red herrings. And um, the, the writers thought of this as a game. They wanted the readers to enjoy them. So these are three novels that were produced together from the detection club. Um, the floating admiral in the middle is quite interesting because it was a relay novel between eight authors. So they had to like, kind of write one chapter and pass it on. Um, of course, the, the criticism of the golden age was that the characters were only secondary to the plot because it wasn't that important. So it was ripe for spoof and parody. So. Here are some really good ones. The most inexplicable one to me is the one on the far right with the Japanese anime between Pryro and Miss Marple. And <laughs> so uh, the backlash came quite quickly after World War II where you started getting um, the hard-boiled American novels like Sam Spade and um, Raymond Chandler because they were a bit cozy, the, the murders. Um, these are three books that I found really influential when I was trying to write about them uh, or research them. These are all nonfiction books. Um, <clears throat> but in the end, the, um, the most important thing that I find is that it was my introduction to what life in England might be like before I actually came to England. <laughs> I found it's all true. <laughs> Thank you.